Today on our 2005 Chevy Silverado, we'll be installing the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57275. But first we'll go ahead and show you the performance of the Airlift Air Helper Springs Now to begin our install, we'll first remove the manufacturer's bump stops. The bump stops are secured to the frame with two bolts. We'll go ahead and remove the bolts and then the bump stop. Next, we'll start assembling the air spring. We'll take the air bag and the two roll plates, one for the top and one for the bottom, and set them on the air bag. Next, we'll take the elbow fitting and screw it into the top of the air bag. First, we'll install it finger tight, then we'll use a wrench and tighten it down an additional one and a half turns, being careful not to over tighten it. Note that the elbow fitting already has a pre-installed sealer on it, so no additional sealer is necessary. Next, we'll install the upper bracket. The upper bracket has two sets of slots for securing to the top of the air spring. As per the instructions, one set will be identified as slots A, and the second set will be slots B. Slots A will be for the driver's side, and the second set of slots indicated by B will be for the passenger side. Since we're assembling the driver's side airbag, we'll be using the slots A and secure it with the 3 8 bolt, split lock washer, and flat washer. We'll install the hardware finger tight at this time. Now we'll go ahead and start assembling the lower bracket. For the driver's side, we'll install a 3 8 bolt and nylon lock nut into the open hole of the lower bracket. Then we'll also install two 3 8 carriage bolts, a 5 16 bolt, parking brake cable bracket, flat washer, and a nylon lock nut. And then we can take our bracket, turn it over, and install it on the bottom of the airbag securing it with the 3 8 flathead screws. Next, we're ready to install the airbag into the truck. We'll install the bottom bracket over the rear axle at the bump stop seat, and the upper bracket will line up with the attachment points for the manufacturer's bump stop. We'll make sure the J-hooks of the lower bracket go around the bump stop seat, being careful not to pinch or damage the manufacturer's brake lines as we set our air spring into position. Now with the air spring in position, we'll use a 3 8 bolt, split lock washer, and flat washer going down through the frame, then through the upper bracket, secure with the 3 8 lock nut. Next we'll install the lower bracket axle strap, securing with a flat washer and lock nut. Next, we'll make any adjustments necessary to make sure that the upper roll plate and lower roll plate are as perpendicular to each other as possible. Now with all our hardware in place, we'll go ahead and start tightening it down. We'll start with the upper bracket to frame attachment point. Once we've made our adjustments, we'll go ahead and tighten down the air spring to the upper bracket. Then we'll secure the axle strap. Then we'll secure the parking brake cable bracket now with the air spring secured, we'll install the parking brake cable clamp. Securing it with the 5 16 bolt, flat washer, and nut. Once we have the hardware installed finger tight, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. This will ensure that the parking brake cable does not come in contact with the air spring. Now with the driver's side installed and secured, we'll move over to the passenger side where we'll repeat the same process. Now with the passenger side installed and secured, we'll go ahead and start routing our airlines. To begin routing the airlines, we'll first make two attachment points for our inflation valves. Here at the back of the vehicle, we'll go ahead and drill two holes next to the manufacturer's seven-way connector as mounting points for our inflation valve. We'll start with a smaller pilot bit and open up to the 7 16 bit, which will be large enough for the inflation valve. Now with both holes drilled out, we'll go ahead and find the center of our airline and cut it in half. Then we'll take one of the inflation valves, 
we'll install a nut and serrated washer, feeding it from underneath the vehicle, outside through the seven way bracket. Then we'll install the rubber washer, flat washer, and nut to secure it, and we can tighten it down. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the passenger side. Now we can go ahead and start routing our airlines. Keep in mind when routing your airlines to stay away from any moving components, such as steering or suspension, or excessive heat such as exhaust. We'll go ahead and route the driver's side, following the manufacturer's wiring, and then along the frame and ultimately to the airbag. We'll go ahead and cut off any excess length using our tubing cutter so we get a clean straight cut without crimping our line. Then we'll go ahead and install it into the elbow fitting at the top of the airbag. To install it, we'll line it up with the fitting, pressing it in firmly and then pulling out to lock it in place. Now we can go ahead and use the black zip ties provided with the install kit to secure the airline as necessary. Next we'll repeat the same process with the passenger side. Now with the passenger side routed over to the airbag, we'll go ahead and cut off any excess length and then install the airline protector sleeve. The sleeve will fit over the airline and help protect it from any excessive heat from the exhaust. Now with the protective sleeve installed, we'll go ahead and install the airline into the airbag, pressing it in firmly and pulling out to lock it in place. Now we can go ahead and use the black zip ties to secure the airline as necessary. Now with both airlines installed and secured, we'll go ahead and cut off any excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look. On the passenger side, we'll be installing a heat shield. To install the heat shield, we'll take it Bend both tabs in and then flatten them back out to create an air space between the tailpipe and the heat shield. To secure the heat shield to the tailpipe, we'll use the worm gear clamps provided. Now with both clamps on, we can then go ahead and take our heat shield, which we've already prepared, set it into position between the tailpipe and the airbag, and then secure it with the worm gear clamps. With everything installed and secured, we'll go ahead and put some air in our air springs and then check for leaks. To check for leaks, we're just gonna use a water soap solution and spray each one of the attachment points. Now that we've verified we don't have any leaks, we're ready to hit the road. And that does it for the install. The Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57275 on our 2005 Chevy Silverado.